Hello and welcome back. Here's another exercise looking at a multinomial goodness of fit test. So does this data appear to fit a multinomial probability distribution? In this exercise, we're looking to see is there a preferred political party among your classmates? So this following table provides observed frequencies from a survey of students at your college. So here we have our null and our alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis would be, well, the proportion of Republicans is equal to the proportion of Democrats is equal to the proportion of everybody else. And that is equal to, well, we have one, two, three different categories. K is equal to three. So those three proportions, they would all be equal to one third or 0.33333, however you like to write it. The alternative is simply not all are equal to one third. And we can do this test at whatever level of significance we like. Okay, so that's it. The, the rest of this is, again, it's going to look so similar to the other exercises that we've done. Our test statistic is a still an upper tail chi squared test. So what we need. We have our observed values. We need to obtain our expected values. And then those are squared. Let me make this summation sign bigger because that denominator is in there too. So it's a similar calculation. The difference here is that these expected values are a lot simpler to calculate. If that null hypothesis is true, then of that total sample, 229, we would expect a third of them to be Republicans, a third to be Democrats, and a third to be something else. So all of those expected frequencies, they'll all be the same, and they'll all be equal to one third times that total, 229. So all of those expected frequencies will all be 229 times a third, well, times is divided by 3, so 76 and a third. So now when we're calculating these differences, those expected frequencies are the same for all of them. So the first one that we'll do, oops, will be 89 minus 76.3. So 89 minus 76. 0.3 div uh, squared divided by 76.3, so 2.11. Let's just keep it to one decimal, that'll be enough. The next one, now we'll look at Democrats, so it'll be 98. Always that same expected frequency, oops. So 98 minus 76.3 squared divided by 76.3, 6.17. And the last is other, so that'll be the 42 minus 76.3 squared divided by 76.3, 15.4. And then our chi-squared test statistic is just the summation of those things. So here we'll have, uh, where's my calculator? There we go. So this is going to be 2.1 plus 6.17 plus 15.4, 23.67. And now we want to go find our critical value or our test statistic. Uh, critical value or p-value. So our critical value, alpha is 0.05. We have k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So k minus 1, in this case, is going to be 2 degrees of freedom. So if we go to our chi-squared tables, oops, our chi-squared with 2 degrees of freedom, alpha is 0.05, critical value is 5.99. So 5.991, and we reject if that test statistic is greater than or equal to that critical value, which clearly 2367 is much greater than 5991. 
So we have fairly strong evidence here to reject that null hypothesis using the critical value approach. Let's go find our p-value. So a test statistic of 2367. Well, that's off the charts. That's way out here somewhere. So our p-value is going to be something smaller than 0 0.005. Less than 0 0.005. Is it two zeros or three zeros? It's two zeros. Okay. So there we have it. We have pretty strong evidence using both critical value and p-value approach. Of course, we get the same conclusion. If we didn't, there's a problem. So we have pretty strong evidence here to reject that null hypothesis. In other words, those those probabilities are are the sorry those proportions are not all the equal to a third. So clearly there is some difference in preferences uh, among our students in terms of which political party they vote for. So that's it. That was relatively quick and hopefully uh, relatively painless uh, to do. We've uh, gone through the start of this module where much more challenging problems and they've actually gotten simpler, I think, as we've gone through. So hopefully these ones are a little bit more straightforward for you. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, bye-bye.